This is part two of the Bicycle Fork video. In part one, the overview, I explained that the very first step in building the fork was going to be inserting into the file the geometry file that you created that controls both the shape of the bike frame and the shape and angle of the fork. The same process will later be used when making the bike frame. By using this method, we will guarantee that the frame and the fork will mate together perfectly and give us the desired wheelbase for our bike and also give us all the important angles that we've decided on ahead of time when we made this geometry file. This video is going to focus on the insertion of this bike geometry file into our fork file. The geometry file you created consists of several sketches on several different planes. The planes and sketches control such things as the offset of the steering axis to the wheel center, the location of the wheel center, which is also where the dropout slot is located, the angle of the steering axis, the top of the crown where the crown meets the head tube of the bike frame, and also the distance from the inside face of the fork end to the front plane. This is controlled by the fork dropout plane. I'm going to start our fork construction with the insertion of the geometry part into a brand new part that I'm now starting. And I cannot stress enough that this is how we must start our fork design. To insert a part into another part, we go to Insert Part. We're going to browse to our bicycle geometry file. Open. And the Insert Part Properties box gives us a choice of the types of items that we want to bring over in the inserted part. If the inserted part had solid bodies, we could check that, or surface bodies, we could check that. In the case of our geometry file, it consists of nothing but planes and unabsorbed sketches. So we will make sure that those are checked. And we can leave the others unchecked. Go down to the bottom of this properties box and make sure that locate part with move copy feature is unchecked. What we want to do is make sure that the part we are inserting will have its origin coincident with the origin of the part we are currently working on. So we will simply hit the green check mark and that will bring our bike geometry file into the new part that we are designing which is currently called part 1. We could go ahead and save this file at this point if we like and rename it something like fork. So we see now in our feature tree, the very first feature has the symbol of a solid part. And we see the name of the part file that was inserted, the bike geometry example. If I click on the plus sign here, I see that I have two folders, one for planes and one for sketches. If we also had solids or surface bodies, we would have had additional folders for those as well. I can further click on these plus signs and open up these folders and see what is in them. Here I see all the planes that came over with our geometry file. You see them highlighting the graphics area as I mouse over them. Similarly, these are the sketches that were brought over and you can see these highlighting as well in the graphics area. You'll notice that this inserted part has its own front plane, its own top plane, and its own right plane, which correspond to the front, top, and right plane in the actual overall part that we are working on. Since we don't need to have two sets of front, top, and right planes, we can go ahead and hide these planes. So we can hide planes in these folders just like we normally would by right-clicking and going to hide. So I'm going to hide the front, top, and right plane that came over with the inserted part. For the rest of my design, I'm going to try to use the front, top, and right plane, which are part of my overall part one. Then I'm going to also delete some planes that aren't necessary for the building of the fork, but are necessary later on for the frame. I don't need the rear dropout plane, and I don't need the chain plane, so I'll just keep those hidden. With regards to sketches, there are some sketches I won't need either, so I will hide the frame layout sketch. I will hide the chain layout sketch. 
seat and handlebar, and the rear dropout layout, leaving just the fork layout and the important tube diameters. You'll notice that the names of these planes and sketches seem unusually long. What SolidWorks has done is taken the original plane names and the original sketch names and appended to them the name of the inserted part. This is to remind us that these planes and these sketches are coming from an inserted part and telling us what inserted part they came from. You might have a case where you insert more than one part into your file, for example. So we now have all the bare essentials for starting our actual fork design. What we need to do is add a couple more planes. Because the fork is tilted at a funny angle, what I want to do is add a plane that passes through the steering axis, which is this construction line here, and also a plane that will represent the top of the crown, which is this line right here. Both planes will be perpendicular to our front plane. In other words, they will be coming straight out of the page or the screen as we are looking at it right now. I'm going to temporarily hide my fork dropout plane so I don't accidentally pick that during this process. And the first plane I will make will be going through the steering axis. So we'll just go to Features, Reference Geometry, Plane. And for my first reference, I will choose this axis. In the second reference, I will choose the front plane. We see that gives us a plane perpendicular to the front passing through our axis. The second plane we're going to add will be at the top of the crown. Our first reference will be this edge here. And our second reference will be, again, the front plane. So the completion of this gives us two tilted planes. One is more or less a right-facing plane that's tilted passing through the steering axis. One is more or less a top plane, but tilted also passing through where the top of the crown will be. So this completes our initial setup. And in the next video, we'll look at how to make all the layout sketches for the fork when viewed from this viewpoint and when viewed from this viewpoint.